Facebook Cafe. News, music, and comedy. Honorable Deputy Leader of the Opposition. Well, that's just not true, and that minister doesn't know his own file. People can fly into the U.S. from India or Pakistan, get in a car, and drive across the border. There are no rapid tests at the border, Mr. Speaker. COVID-19 and, and, and double variants have been reported all around the world, including 50 countries, and the Prime Minister is just playing whack-a-mole when it comes to COVID-19. We need to stop flights from all hot spots now, and we need to get rapid testing at the border now. Is the Prime Minister going to wait a day, a week, or never to make the right decision? Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, far be it from me to correct the Honourable Member, but I'm going to try. Travellers who come through the U.S. need to get a test at the U.S. prior to arriving Speaker. And then when arriving at the border, they have to get tested again, Mr. Speaker. What I want to ask the honorable member is, weren't her colleagues asking for the suspension of the hotel quarantine just a few weeks ago? Thank goodness we didn't listen to them, Mr. Speaker. Finance minister has been making the bizarre claim that back during the debt crisis of 0809, the big mistake countries made was not adding enough debt. In fact, the countries that did what she suggests and what she is doing now, France, Spain, Greece, Italy, they all experienced massive double-digit unemployment. Why? Because they kept piling up debts in the middle of a debt crisis, whereas Canada, Israel, Switzerland, and Germany, which had small deficits and returned to balanced budget, kept unemployment low. Won't the government admit that the best way to get people back to work is to have strong finances for the nation? Old Minister. Mr. Speaker, from the very beginning of this pandemic, I've been taking questions on our support for Canadians. And every single time the Conservatives seem to ask a question, they're focused on the dollars we've spent rather than the people that we have helped. Mr. Speaker, from the very beginning, we have advanced uh, benefits that have supported 9 million Canadians to help them keep food on the table. Over 5 million workers have kept a job because of the wage subsidy. I will not apologize for being there for Canadians in their time of need. And as we go forward, we will continue to do what it takes so those those same Canadians have the opportunity to take part in the economy and earn a paycheck to support their families. For Carlton. Well, he should apologize. He should apologize for such a terrible record on jobs with uh, the, the highest unemployment uh, in the G7 for most of this crisis. Canadians want paychecks, not more national credit card debts. And Robert Aslan, former uh, aide to the Prime Minister, agrees. He says. A budget that needs a 700 pages of red ink says a lot about the government's motivations after doubling the federal debt in only six years and spending close to a trillion dollars, not moving in the needle on long-term growth would be the worst possible legacy of this budget. Will he agree with his former advisor? Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, I will not take lessons on economic management from the member who was part of a government with the single worst economic growth record since the Great Depression. The reality is we have been there to support Canadian workers and businesses from the beginning, and we will continue to be there for Canadian workers and businesses through to the end of this pandemic. Mr. Speaker, the one thing the Conservatives can be counted upon is to oppose any measure that seems to support households and businesses throughout this pandemic as their leader continues to today. Mr. Speaker, it's really concerning to hear the Prime Minister and his government say that they are not responsible. They say they have no regrets about the handling of the pandemic. And yet, there were delays in border control. There were hundreds of thousands of Canadians facing problems here. There were delays in border control, delays in rapid testing, and above all, delays in supplying vaccines. And that is due to to the Liberal government. Doesn't the Prime Minister believe that there should be rapid tests for everyone crossing our border? The Honourable Minister. 
Mr. Speaker, every step of the way, we've been there for Canadians, leading with science and evidence, Mr. Speaker, and with the advice of our chief public health officers and officials. And Mr. Speaker, while we're talking about rapid tests, let's just talk about the rapid tests that we've sent. We've sent over 25.4 million rapid tests to provinces and territories, Mr. Speaker. Indeed, almost four point, over 4.7 million to Quebec alone. And we didn't stop there. We've also provided expertise, guidance. And there seems to be a confusion between Vancouver, Grenville. In 2015, the debt to GDP ratio was 30%, and the Liberals campaigned on dropping it to 27% by 2019 20. This year, it will be above 50%. Debt to GDP appears to remain our fiscal anchor in budget 2021. The government is still saying that it will moderately decrease, but this time starting from a number almost twice as big as predicted. So do we really have a credible fiscal anchor? Perhaps we should consider using a new one. Maybe debt to service ratio. This is easy to understand. Can the minister please tell us what other fiscal anchors the government has considered? The Honourable Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Honourable Member for her thoughtful question and will take her suggestion under advisement. I will point out, however, that Canada entered this pandemic with the lowest jet debt to GDP ratio in the G7. The pandemic created immense costs and responding was simply not an option to keep food on the table for households and workers on the payroll. As we emerge from this pandemic, it's essential that we continue to manage our finances in a responsible way and to do so, maintaining a downward track on the debt to GDP ratio is an intelligent and thoughtful response so we ensure that for generations to come we can protect the fiscal capacity of our country to continue to respond to emergencies that may arise in the future don't forget to like dislike subscribe and comment safe space cafe and always have a good day